To get the most distance with your driver, one of the key things you must do is to get the ball up in the air as quickly as possible. And although your driver has the lowest loft of all the clubs you use to get to the green, it still has some degrees of loft on it to help you do just that. But to understand how much driver loft impacts how far you hit the ball, we need to look beyond the loft number that is actually stamped in it. Because driver loft is not just static, but also dynamic. And it's for that reason you may actually need less loft in your driver rather than more of it if you want to drive the ball further. Welcome back to the Golf in Focus channel everybody and in this video we look in depth at the subject of how driver loft affects distance and whether a higher or lower loft driver goes further. If you're anything like me, the stats that launch monitor manufacturers give golfers can sometimes seem to make an already complicated game seem even more so. For example, when it used to come to discussions about driver loft and how it affected distance, I assumed until relatively recently that the main thing that mattered was the loft number that was displayed in the club. But with launch monitors now helping golfers of all standards understand why they hit the ball as far as they do, the reality it turns out is a bit more complex than that. Because to truly understand how much driver loft impacts distance, and whether a higher or lower loft of driver will result in you hitting the ball further, we must delve a bit deeper to understand the difference between a driver's static loft, in other words the degree number shown in the club, and its dynamic loft, which is in short the amount of loft in the club face at impact with the ball. And according to Trackman, a leading launch monitor maker, dynamic loft affects distance more than static loft where an increase of 4.2 degrees of dynamic loft can result in a 29 yard longer drive for a 95 mile an hour swing speed golfer. There's also an element of spin loft in there too, but while all this may seem initially a bit overly complicated, if you spend a little time trying to get to know what these terms mean in practice, it can help you choose the correct degree of driver that gets you some vital extra yards of distance out in the course. So when it comes to the question of whether adding or lowering the loft in your driver will increase the distance you hit the ball, what this all in short means is that because dynamic loft is affected by many aspects of a golfer's swing, the answer is different for different players. As a general rule however, golfers with slow swing speeds of 80 miles an hour or less, and those who hit up in the ball with a positive attack angle, increase distance by using a higher loft driver. Players that hit down in the ball with a negative attack angle are those with high driver swing speeds of 100 miles an hour or more, meanwhile benefit from lower driver lofts. As with every rule of thumb in golf though, there are of course exceptions. But what we're trying to establish quickly when it comes to the topic of whether increasing or decreasing the loft in a driver will add or reduce distance is that loft is three rather than two dimensional. The loft stamped in your driver, whether that be seven degrees or 14 degrees, is only one element of the picture when it comes to driver loft. As we can see from an example of Roy McIlroy's launch monitor data, loft is also dynamic, and dynamic loft is controlled rotationally rather than in the up and down direction that static loft works. In number terms, what that means in this example is that although he typically uses a driver with an eight degree loft or less, because of the way he swung the golf club in this shot, the driver loft, in other words, the dynamic loft, he actually hit the ball with was 11.4 degrees. Or if we think about an example of an amateur who hits their driver very high off the tee, the loft picture may look like this. They may start with a driver that is 10 degrees when they address the ball because that is the loft stamped in the club, but by the time they hit the ball they actually have added an extra 10 degrees of loft due to the way they swing and as a result have in reality turned their driver into a five wood. And as we all know, as our clubs get more lofted as we go through the bag, the ball doesn't go as far. When it comes to driving distance and questions like whether a higher or lower loft of driver will increase or reduce distance, we are often reluctant at Golfing Focus to start using technical terms such as dynamic loft, spin loft, attack angle, etc. But the reason they are important and why it's useful to have even a basic understanding of them is that they impact two of the three most important elements that determine every golfer's driver distance, namely launch angle and spin rate. In the first generation of launch monitors which were made, only these numbers, launch angle and spin rate, were displayed alongside ball speed, club speed and smash factor stats. This helped golfers and coaches hugely in terms of being able to assess instantly whether a player's launch conditions were in the optimal range for their club and ball speeds. 
but while that allowed them to understand that someone's launch angle was too low, for example, it didn't give them data to tell them why. And that's why modern launch monitors have been developed to now also measure dynamic loft and angle of attack, because by understanding that launch angle is 85% of a ball's dynamic loft, plus 15% of a ball's launch angle, instructors can now much more easily help players to hit their optimal launch angles. It could be their dynamic loft, or it could be their attack angle that's at fault, or indeed it could be both. But today there is no guesswork involved, and as a result we can much more quickly understand why a golfer's launch conditions are potentially not optimal. This of course does not mean that regular golfers need to start obsessing about the technicalities which lie behind these numbers and develop an in-depth knowledge of all these terms. After all, golf is hard enough as it is for us regular amateurs. But what we hope a high level understanding will assist you with is that when it comes to thinking about whether a higher or lower lofted driver will go further, you don't simply think it's only ever going to be a matter of altering the stamp degree number on the club. So that's it for this look at how much driver loft affects distance. As ever, and most importantly, we hope you're enjoying your golf. And for all our regular watchers, many thanks for helping us reach the 6,000 subscriber mark recently. Your support is really much appreciated, and we hope to see you over in another video shortly.